Sometimes someone unexpectedly comes into your life out of nowhere, makes your heart race, and changes you forever. We call those people cops. <laughs> Behind every angry woman stands a man who has absolutely no idea what he did wrong. <laughs> Repeatedly. Maybe. Uh-oh. Yeah, maybe. So I call forth and I dedicate this flame to the threefold flame in the heart that would be divine love, divine wisdom, and divine power. This flame I dedicate to the diamond platinum ray. This flame I dedicate to friends and family. Friends and family. This flame is dedicated to Archangel Raphael. This flame is dedicated to COL Australia. COL Australia. Do I have an, uh, Peace. Peace? All right. This flame is dedicated to peace. 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 And this flame to health. Health and COL. <laughs> health Our and center. Health. And this COL. Health. There you go. The health of our center. Okay. In your in your books, in your, right in the front cover, you have a decree called I Am Light, and then you also on the back of it have a list of the twelve master, master, masters of, of the twelve points of consciousness. So the masters of the twelve points of consciousness, we're going to call them in. Go down the row, we'll call them in together. Are you ready? Together. Great, Great Divine, Divine Director, Saint Germain, Germain Jesus, Helios, Godfrey, Moria, Serapis Bay, Kutumi, Leonto, Victory, Cyclopedia, Lord Maitreya. That was great. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody? Fine. Is this a tent revival or what? Yeah. Let me hear it. Yeah. All right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's great to to be back together again. It's out here in this beautiful weather. And uh, thanks to Ron and Jereen for this wonderful tent and for all the people that have helped put it up and get us ready for today. We've had several meetings on how to uh, keep our center uh, sanitized and organized and uh, ready for people to enter. And so we've come up with some guidelines. Uh, it, was all, it was emailed to everybody, so hopefully you saw that. It was also posted on Facebook. And, but just to let you know, while you're here on Sunday mornings, uh, the restrooms, if you need to go to the restroom, you'll enter up the ramp. And only three people are allowed in the building at one time without masks. So when you go in, there's uh, a whiteboard there where you can put your initial on it. So only three initials on there. There's two bathrooms downstairs and one upstairs, so we can have three people in there. This entrance is going to be for clergy only on Sunday mornings because we'll be going in and out trying to get, get set up and ready. In the restrooms, there are uh, there's a list taped to the mirrors, I believe, in each one of the restrooms, and it tells you what you what you need to do when, after you use a restroom to keep it sanitized. There's hand sanitizer, well, there's wipes in there. And so you'll take one or two wipes and wipe down everything that you've touched, and um, including the doorknobs and the light switches and the handicap rails, the toilet flusher, the, the whole bit. And then uh, we wouldn't have this, um, if everybody does this, 
consistently, then there won't be as much for the cleaning crew to have to sanitize later. So as we use the center, that's available. There's also hand sanitizers located in the hallway here at the back door, uh, in between the two bathrooms, and upstairs outside the bathroom, a little push the pump sanitizer. So use those. There's a trash can at the bottom of the stairs here, so when you come out and you erase your initial, you can put your wipes in there. You don't have to leave them inside. You'll have those for, you'll have that wipe so you can wipe down the handles as you do. Six foot path, um, up the ramp there's markings for six feet apart. So if you, if you have more people uh, waiting in line, just stay six feet apart. So you don't have to, you don't have to wear a mask outside. If there's more than three people inside, we will be wearing masks. Well, we're just not going to let more than three people inside. Pardon? We're just not going to let more than three people inside. Right. That, right. That's the rule. It's not, right. It's not we're we're going to keep three people, no more than three people, in at a time on Sunday mornings. Um, and the path to get there will be, you know, around, be careful going around the fans because of all the cords and everything. And then go up in and then come back out the door and come down the stairs when you're leaving so you don't have to come back down the ramp if somebody's waiting at the, Ooh, you know, the on the cold. ramp. No use of the kitchen. There are paper towels for use at, in the bathrooms. Um, we're not going to be using a cloth towels for a while. There's no need for that so that uh, we won't be secondhand using towels in the, in the bathroom. We will be meeting out here, rain or shine, for a while. If it's, I mean, if it's really stormy, it does get wet inside. There's some dripping on the edges and stuff, but um, I, I think, like today, it's beautiful. We can stay out here. Um, people can meet out here for classes. People can meet out here for um, uh, just about anything. Priesthood meetings, board meetings, unless we absolutely want to meet on Zoom. You know. Oops. Is everyone comfortable? Is everyone comfortable? Yeah, is it cool enough for everybody? Cool. Got enough nice. air flowing? Okay. If we have more people, we still have some empty chairs. Uh, we can also open up this side and move, move out onto that patio over there. So we don't want anybody parking in this, this area. Um, and it's really good to see everybody again. Thanks for coming out. Anything else? Anything else from the board president? No, I'll see. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with a song. Love, Love is Gentle on page eight. All right, y'all ready? Yes. Love is gentle, love is fine. Heals the room and takes the time. Plays the softest melody Till you find your own hobby Love this gentle love is kind Walks around inside your mind Opens doors and leaves the key Finds the why of you and me Shoot a thousand tendrils up to touch your morning sun. Take your sweet time with me. Don't make a rhyme with me. Watch me flow and let me watch you when I cry. Love is gentle, love is gone. Gives the room and takes the time. Plays the softest melody. Let me grow and be free, and 
should a thousand tendrils up to touch a morning star? Don't be so sure of me, don't make a cure of me. Bless my wings and let me find my peace of mind. Love is gentle, love is kind. Love is kind. Give the room and takes the time. Takes the time. Plays the softest melody. Hallelujah. divinity of humanity together what I, what I speak and think and do are only for humanity only for the happiness of humanity only for the peace of humanity only for the awakening of humanity therefore in all that concerns me my words thoughts and actions are beyond any selfishness, ego, or conflict. All that exists is the universe itself, light itself, truth itself, and God itself. And then in your in the front of your book is I am light by Kutumi. Together. I am light, glowing light, radiating light, intensified light. God consumes my darkness, transmuting it into light. This day I am the focus of the central sun. Flowing through me is a crystal river, a living fountain of light. 
that can never be qualified by human thought and feeling. I am an outpost of the divinity. Such darkness as has used me is swallowed up by the mighty river of light which I am. I am, I am, I am light. I live, I live, I live in light. I am light's fullest dimension. I am light's purest intention. I am light, my light, light. Flooding the world everywhere I move. Blessing, strengthening, and conveying the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. Great, I like that. On page two, I am a channel. Together, I am, I am a channel of love, will, and service. I am a gatekeeper of universal energy. I stand with the masters of light against the forces of darkness. Amen. We, we missed our uh, ceremony where we called in the spring gates, I suppose. So now we're going to do that. This is the spring call to archangels, so you'll be looking at the... You'll be looking at... The, where it says spring equinox. And as you can see, um, when it gets down to a circle of power, we say it three times. So the first one is a circle of power. We come around again and it's a circle of life, and then again it's a circle of love. So, together, Raphael, Raphael before me, Michael behind me, Uriel to my right, Gabriel to my left, in a circle of power, in a sphere of protection, thus I stand. Raphael before me, Michael behind me, Uriel to my right, Gabriel to my left, in a circle of light, in a sphere of protection, thus I stand. Raphael before me, Michael behind me, Uriel to my right, Gabriel to my left, in a circle of love, in a sphere of protection, thus I stand. I've used this a lot um, during this stay at home time. I was home quite a bit, uh, mainly because a lot of the therapists didn't take off, so I uh, thought, oh, wow. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. They all just went to work instead. So I, <laughs> I work PR and if they're off, then I work. But they didn't take off. Now I'm working a lot. But uh, so I had a lot of opportunity to uh, read, read some different stuff. Kind of branched out a little bit. I read the art, the art and practice of astral projection. This is a little book I found up here that was on the giveaway table. That's fascinating by Ophiel, and I don't know if that's some um, disincarnate, I don't know who this is, it doesn't really say, it's that one name, kind of like the initiate, you know, but it was fascinating. All my life I've been able to project, uh, mostly when I go to sleep at night, sometimes before I sleep, but you know, I just start drifting out, flying around, uh, don't really have a purpose, I just, you know, just go, but this book kind of explains some reasons why you should pay attention to where you're going and what you're doing. It can greatly uh, enhance your life because then you'll notice uh, some things you could actually have control over in your everyday life. Anyway, anyway it was fascinating. Some of the weird stuff. Then I got this book. Highly recommended. See, I finished reading um, the, uh, the St. Germain book, Alchemy. Yeah, that's a cool book. Uh, I still don't have a gift for it, so I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm working on it. But then this book was highly recommended, Re Reality Unveiled. Somebody named Ziad Mosk, very highly recommended. And I guess the, the takeaway from that book is he's really advocating oneness. I mean, if you don't know who you are, you got to know who you are. So that's something you do through meditation, contemplation. Um, anyway, it was a fascinating book. Well, actually, it, he's not a theos theosophist. He didn't claim any religion or Buddhism or anything like that. But it's interesting that he, he 
had a lot of knowledge about theosophy and, and sci scientific type uh, metaphysics, that kind of thing. They're very metaphysical. He even had his, his own little chart of the, the different planes. So he used that a lot to help people understand, people who have no clue about what, what we study here, to understand where they come from and you know, how from a, a grain of sand on up to the, the I am presence. Anyway, he does that in a nice way. So I, I was impressed with the book. Got a lot of takeaways from that one too. Um, what I wanted to do, in, instead of a service, although I have something written down about holding energy, I'm going to do it real quick, like, because then I want to hear from other people, what were some takeaways from your stay at home? I mean, what, what, you know, what were your aha moments? I just think I'd rather hear that. Than, um, but since I told Donnell I was going to give a talk on holding energy, it's this big. <laughs> very tiny holding energy. That's something we talk about here. You know, I'll hold for you. Or, I, you know, I was holding for her. Was, you know, but what we're talking about holding energy. And I said when I find it. Anyway, one of the first things you do is you get focused on a person or a situation and you hold that energy. You use, if you're not really good at meditation, and some of them, some of them people I know who are pretty advanced into theosophy and metaphysics say they don't know how to meditate, but you start with contemplation. So when you're sitting there and contemplating, you're focusing that energy. So that's the, uh, that's kind of the gist of it, whether you're meditating or contemplating. So when you have somebody you have to hold energy for, a situation, no matter how big, the universe doesn't really, I don't have, I think it, the, discriminates on size, you know, a tiny grain of sand as it is an ocean. So um, then you focus that awareness, you visualize, that's a very key ingredient, you visualize maybe healing, you visualize a situation where people are happy. You, you, uh, you can call in a higher power, you almost have to. And when I say a higher power, I was thinking masters at first, and I thought, no, I'm sh you know, I'm focused and I'm shooting up to my higher power. So, and that clarifies, that puts a lot of clarity and a lot of focus um, and a whole bunch of love, which is a higher energy. Of course, it doesn't hurt to call in a, someone who has uh, left this plane because they have mastered, uh, mastered the power. So holding energy is securing of spiritual force fields, because remember, Holding energy, energy is energy, whether you can see it or not. You can't see my voice projecting through the air, but you are hearing it, so it's there. But So it's a spiritual force field in matter. And the masters all teach their uh, initiates, their chilas, how to do that. And when we're on the other side, and if we're working in, in any of the uh, Masters ashrams, their centers of focus. That's one of the first things I teach you. That said, holding energy, I would really want to invite someone who had an aha moment. I could go around the room. <laughs> <laughs> you would you prefer I do that? Yeah. Okay, Nancy can go first. Well, I guess it's just, well, okay, you know, my friend Lynn crossed over during this period of time. And so I was pretty focused there for a lot of the time. But one of the greatest gifts, I guess, is that um, I just spent a lot of time in mindfulness and meditation and working on my harp, which is another way of expressing mindfulness and meditation. There are reasons that we are concerned about the virus. And if you, if you are within any telecommunication instrument like a radio or a TV or a 
a phone, you know all of the reasons that are cons that we should be concerned about the virus. However, there are many things that have come about because this is a nationwide uh, uh, attention. It is a nationwide uh, focus. And I say nationwide because we are lucky for living in the United States of America, and I thank all that have understood that meaning of living in America as opposed to other countries. I say America, North America. There's South America, there's Central America, there's Canada. All of these are not part of us uh, politically. But of course, the virus knows no boundary. But my biggest joy of being with all of my fellow North Americans is that we're focused on each other and we're focused about helping each other. We're focused about watching out for each other. And that I did not think was possible in January. I thought we were divided and that we would be divided until I died and then something else would happen. Change is, for me, I hate change. I despise change. I get angry over change. But change is before us and behind us, along our path. We're going from can to can't on this thing. And, um, I love being with you at this time. I think about getting in front of you and speaking a lot because it like turns on the uh, endorphin receptors of my brain. So that is my aha moment. And I'd love to hear yours. I have always been able to entertain myself since I was a teenager. I used to sneak my mother's books from the literary guild and read them all. I was reading Gone with the Wind and my father caught me, thought I shouldn't be reading it and threw it in the furnace. That was the second time I read it. <laughs> so books fill an enormous part of our life and it did in the last two months. Jigsaw puzzles, sewing, television, computer, Fiction, non-fiction, I have always entertained myself, but they've had a great deal of time for serious meditation, and I had four people that I kept in regular touch with who really were not handling it well. So each day I would call each one of them and talk to them. And then the time that I had to spend in deep and serious meditation increased by volumes. I went out to Kroger's once every three days just to get out of the house. <laughs> so it was not a tedious time for me. I, it was a time well spent on some things. Well, I'm chanting for up to three hours a day. Are you really? <laughs> yes, and I'm, this is what I'm going to be talking about on June 14th. I've got the sermon by my own spiritual path and my own uh, my own daily ritual and how important it is to me and what it's done for me and so I've had a little bit more time recently to uh, to up that you chanted for hours a day but oh, yeah. hours. how many hours lots lots like lots four, of hours. Four hours more than that uh, really like yeah. all day sometimes like, pretty yeah. much all day I went six hours one time I felt fantastic so, 
<laughs> anyway, and you, and we kneeled. Oh wow! Yeah, we had a little stool, but we put our feet uh, up un underneath it and kneeled and and focused on a, mo a mandala. I couldn't do that. Yeah. So, um, I think what it's done. The good things about, if there are any good things, is that the lockdown has has sort of hit a pause button on society, and it has the good things in that. Or it's, it's sort of broken people out of their trance. You know, people have been in this hamster wheel kind of uh, kind of trance, trying to work, um, make a living, and, and that's not a very high state of consciousness. Um, and so getting a little pause from that has, uh, has, has been, I think, a, a needed, and I think we don't really know how that's gonna play out. That, that's still gonna play out over time. I don't think we're gonna go back to exactly the same society that we had. I think it's gonna be better. Um, I think that what this has shown people is there's a tremendous amount of imbalance in our society. There's a lot of suffering in our society that was kind of under the radar. And this has given everybody the opportunity to, to see it. And I, I think that some of it's going to get addressed in a way that it, it was not addressed um, before. And, um, and, and that's good. Uh, the environment has healed. There's whales off Miami. There's dolphins in the Venetian canals. There's up to 50% less pollution in some major cities, and this can be seen from the satellite. So um, that's all very dramatic, and I think that that shows that just a little bit of time off from our um, the society that we were in um, can have some dramatic effects for the Earth. So that can only be uh, a, a, a good thing. Um, so uh, that's what I've that's what I've seen. Um, I think just giving people the opportunity to, to rest a little bit, to pause a little bit, um, and to kind of look around and see, um, it's a little bit of an opportunity to remake a new world uh, in, uh, in, in in a better way. And uh, I think we're we're going to do that. Mike's going to sort of echo um, Becky a little bit. And, and Tom, because I think we're all getting uh, new insights and looking, and we're used to, as a group, as a metaphysical group, we're, we're used to looking at things that are wide and more inclusive. Um, it reminds me, I think I mentioned this in a, one of my services I did online, that it reminds me of when, in the 70s, uh, when disco dancing and line dancing came about. And I was sitting in a club and all of a sudden this line dance came on, uh, the music came on and everybody got up and got out on the stage and started dancing the same moves at the same time and the same rhythm. They were separate but they were not. It's just like the decree we have. They were separate but they were not. They were together in rhythm and energy and, and power. And that's sort of what I've, I've been seeing with this, um, with the pandemic, is it's like it's making everybody look in one direction. One direction, being focused in one direction. You know, no, most of the time when you go out and talk to somebody, what's the thing you have in common to talk about? Weather. Weather. Oh, the weather's great today. Everybody, everybody knows about the weather, you know, and so that's like a, a, an opening, uh, a, a, an icebreaker to start talking to somebody. Well, now it's like everybody has an idea, everybody has an opinion, everybody has feelings about what's going on right now, and the pan, uh, you know, the pandemic and the, the wearing of masks and the and and the social distancing and even though that everybody's a little bit different, but we're really not different. We're all looking in the same direction. And I agree uh, totally with Tom that there is um, there is a new world that's being emerging and it's coming out right in front of our eyes. And if we just take the time to open our eyes, get quiet and look and see where we are in this on this planet and how how 
come from being almost forced, or should I say highly encouraged by the powers that be, to make something really positive out of this. Because our planet's been going downhill for a long time, folks. It, it really has. And this has given us a time to, to look and see, hey, this is what it could be like. You know, uh, the more beautiful waters, the more, uh, the less smog, the um, uh, people getting together and praying together and decreeing together and, and doing things together and finding new creative ways to fill your time. And I'm kind of like Peggy, too. You know, there's a part of me that likes my isolation. Um, I'm an Aquarian and I do like my alone time. And, uh, but then there's times where it's like, we were going over to my sister's house on Friday to, to celebrate her birthday. And all of a sudden I realized my arms ache for a hug, you know. Um, I miss that. I miss that bodily touch with, with other humans. And I know that it's still possible. Um, and it won't be long to where we can be back together and, and uh, do all of our hugging and kissing and things that, that we love to do. Um, but we're just going to be more conscious. We're going to be more aware and more conscious when we, um, it's just another level, another level on the spiral that we're moving up in our uh, evolutionary path. So if you look at um, the evolutionary process, Folks, we're, we're just, we're right in the middle of it. I mean, we're seeing it unfold right here in front of us. Before it was like taking eons to, to look at it and you have to look back and say, oh yeah, that was a, uh, we've evolved past whatever. And now it's, you're seeing it happen. And things are moving so much faster. So that's all I've got to say about that. Um, I'm close to the mic. Close to the mic. Closer? Yeah. Okay. Right on um, top of it. I agree with a lot where... Closer. Closer? Yeah. Right on top where I, I you know, agree with everybody where I've really enjoyed seeing this reset and our ecosystem getting so much healthier. I've truly enjoyed that. But I think, um, excuse me, I think the most aha moment that I felt was um, years ago when I thought I was making the choice to work through forgiveness. I think I've had so much more time to spend and meditate and realize that I need to ask for this forgiveness myself. And it's been a difficult thing for me to do. Um, but that's really the biggest change that I've done is I've had to ask to be forgiven. And, um, but, I, you know, I have missed all of you so much. You all have changed my life. Not do want to thank you so much for that. Thank you, Breezy. First of all, I'd like to ask, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Every one of you out there, have you noticed a shift in the energy? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Yep. I know uh, this morning while I was meditating, it was just a big shift. And it's going to be different for each person, I guess. And I thought that was uh, kind of interesting. I haven't necessarily uh, gone in to find out what the shift is about, other than the fact that it's a heck of a lot more stronger than what it was previously. I know for me, um, I do a lot of research. And during this time frame, I've had the definitely have had the time to just about research on any and everything I could think of. But during this time frame, as things are shifting for the Earth in this particular system that we're in, I think it's uh, most in keeping with what we all came here for. And uh, speaking with uh, Becky last week, she asked me what I thought about above is below. And I think the whole time frame of as above, so below, is a part of that shift that 
we're specifically, for those of you who meditate and are aware of it, are in keeping with going with the flow of the shift. So have a great day and enjoy the shift. <laughs> My fishing buddies want to talk. <laughs> hey, uh, JD caught two big catfish yesterday. Big one. Oh my God. He was like a big old boy. He was so proud. Every time somebody walked by, he hauled them up out of the water. Because <laughs> they'd always ask, Did you catch something? Oh my God. He was so yeah. What'd you catch? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Yeah, that's it. She's the most wonderful fishing host. She always lets her invitees catch them first. Catch them first. <laughs> She's a wonderful, sweet, kind, and dear person. Many thanks. As far as healing of the planet, let's all do our part to make sure we don't backslide on that. Walk if you can instead of driving. Do what you can do to avoid putting more pollution in. As you see, Mother Earth can heal herself. We can't. We've been given the most as a species and we do the less, the least amount with it. Let's apply our gifts to making, to keeping that planet healing going. We can do that. We can watch what we use. We can watch what we throw away. We can reduce, reuse, recycle the three R's we've been talking about for 25 years in this country. Let's do our part. That's That was my aha moment that of the species most gifted, we seem to appreciate it the least. Let's turn that around and apply that to keeping that healing going. Because as goes Mother Earth, so goes we. That's my aha. <coughs> well, now y'all know what it's like to live on porch. <laughs> Pick it up and hold it. That better? Yeah. No. Even far. First time I went there it was three years. No car. No place to shop. The only way you're gonna shop is gonna plan to go to White. And you only spend about a week there. No restaurant really to go to. And you rode a bicycle everywhere you went. And you didn't go real far. Let me tell you. It's only three miles long, mile and a half wide. Spent three years doing that. I got really, really, really used to it. So for me, adapting to not home and everything didn't really bother me at all. Went back to college for five years. Did the exact same thing. So I kind of clicked back into what I did then. Was try to more go inside of myself and see what part of me needed to be worked on. What part of me needed to be sit down and talk to. I did a lot of reading. One thing I missed more than anything was all y'all. Just like when I lived there both times and now, my family. In the midst of all of this, Carl and I had to go to Atlanta. Monique had to come from Brunswick up, and we had to move all of Tiffany's stuff. Her stuff a lot was a combination of me and my mother. This is antique furniture and different things. So during this time, there's been a lot of soul searching for me. What was my life like with my mother? What did I need to heal? What did I need to do? Was there something with my child that I needed to work on? And then seeing my other child, she was fine, healthy, because she's, some of you know, she's been through a really rough time this past two years. It's all come to an end and she's doing well. But I think this is a time that we've all gone into ourselves and looked at ourselves and said, where are we in our own evolution of us? Who are we? What are we? 
What do we want to now accomplish in our life? What do we want to be? You want to be a better wife, a better mother, a better priest, just a better human being. Because maybe the earth now has turned itself over. Kind of like when I lived on a farm, we plowed the field every spring. Well now, Mother Earth's field has been plowed. So as we go inside and as we look at ourselves, what do we come out with? Do you think that you have grown? I would hope so. I would hope that everyone on planet Earth has now grown and realized that it can be taken away immediately. It can be gone very quickly. Wouldn't take long at all. So you go back and you value the people that are in your life. You value those people you go to church with. Whether you see them all the time or not, you value your family. I don't get to see Monique very much, but I talk to her all the time. I value Paul's daughter, Sherry. I don't get to see her a whole lot because we're working, but I certainly do enjoy my time when I do get to see her and visit her. So I want you to know how much I value all of you, your friendship, your love. Always at the end of a telephone, no problem what, not now. <laughs> No matter what, priesthood with a Zoom, I got to see all of you, talk to all of you, and always there for you. So love the one you with. <laughs> <laughs> We're running low on time, so and I have a very important one more thing to do, and that is walk around with the offertory basket. So for sanitary purposes, I will just carry it and stick it out in front of you. And, and if you'll be generous enough to drop your uh, donation, your tithe off, your whatever it is you've got to give, your love, if you just want to hold your hand over it and, and give some manifesting abundance, that, that is wonderful. Energy is priceless. Did it, Nancy? <laughs> oh, alrighty. Here we go. The light of Christ flows through us as we give and receive God's blessings of prosperity and abundance.
can't wait to do this again next week. And uh, I think after this, we have uh, some of us are staying for a meeting and a clearance. And uh, okay. next Sunday we have a guest speaker, Jennifer Taylor. Uh, she's got some really interesting things. I'll be posting that on Facebook that she'll be talking about next week. So please be sure to plan to come and enjoy that service. Thank you.